Hello everyone, I'm Sahil and welcome back to the channel. If you guys are keeping yourself updated through the news, you'll know that uh, Hong Kong's Hengsheng Index is going through the biggest revamp since its establishment. Uh, now this is going to result in billions of dollars moving around uh, from one company to another as uh, all the funds tracking the index starts to like reshuffle their uh, portfolios to meet the weightages uh, that Hengsheng would take up. Uh, so in this video, we're going to look at what are the changes that are being made and also try to figure out which companies would be the possible winners and uh, which would be the losers. So yeah, let's hit it up. The Hang Seng Index or HSI for uh, short has been overstuffed with financial companies in the past since uh, Hong Kong itself has been a financial hub in the region. Uh, however, with the recent stock market moves and also the conflict with China and US, a lot of Chinese companies have decided to list on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So this has uh, forced the index compilers to change uh, the weightages between the companies and come up with uh, adjusted rules to better reflect the city. This is also to make the index more attractive to the mainland investors since they were the one their buying frenzy in January that uh, moved the stock uh, above 30k for the first time since May 2019. This was much required since HSI has been lagging its peer in the past few years in terms of performance. So it's not a surprise uh, that uh, the move itself uh, mostly focused on the inclusion of new economy companies and a uh, reduction or uh, total deletion of uh, the more traditional companies. So there are five major changes that have been made. Firstly, the number of companies uh, within the index will be increased from the current 52 to 80 by mid-2020 uh, and eventually the goal is to reach 100. Uh, secondly, the individual companies weightage within the uh, within the index will be capped at 5%. This is a reduction for the single stock companies from 10% and an increase for the secondary listed companies from 5%. The third uh, change is uh, the lowering of the uh, listing history requirement down to three uh, months for all the companies. Previously, it was a minimum three months only for the companies that are top in the market value ranking. And uh, the fourth change made is the expansion in the individual sector re representation. So uh, like I mentioned, right, previously it was uh, dominated by the financial industry. Uh, and uh, actually, telecom, financial and IT covered 80% of the index. So now there will be more representation of the other ignored uh, sectors. The last major change is that 20 to 25 companies in the HSI will be Hong Kong firms and this number will be evaluated every two years. Currently, uh, the Hong Kong firms make 42.2% of the total market cap of HSI. Okay, so after knowing all these uh, changes, let's figure out who's going to benefit out of that. So the number one beneficiaries would be uh, the secondary listed companies or the ones that carry unequal voting right. This includes Alibaba and Meituan. Uh, since these firms will have three percentage point added to their uh, cap on the weightage uh, from 5% to 8% now, uh, these companies like Alibaba and Meituan already top the 5% cap. The second beneficiaries would be the consumer and healthcare sector. Uh, since their representation will be increased by 4 and 3% respectively uh, on the expense of the financial sector. This is according to the uh, research note by Goldman Sachs. The third beneficiaries are the large uh, Chinese new economy companies uh, since they have a chance of being added to the index and that will put a upward pressure, a price pressure on them. So JD maybe, I don't know. The fourth uh, beneficiaries are the index owners itself uh, since uh, more new economy uh, companies are added to the index the chances of uh, having more uh, investors attracted to buy these index will be there let's uh, move on to the losers of this move i believe tencent and aia will see a sell-off because their weightage on the uh, index already exceeds the eight percent cap uh, according to the updated rules tencent especially because it's at 11.1 percent weightage on the index and aia is at 9.89 uh, percent the second losers could be the Hong Kong firms uh, as according to Goldman Sachs, their representation in the index could decrease to 32% from the current 42.2% as I mentioned before. The third loser would be the financial sector as a whole. Uh, since according to Smart Karma, uh, there could be a potential deletion of the lagging traditional Chinese financial institutes like the uh, uh, Bank of Communication and uh, China Life Insurance. 
So yeah, uh, the financial sector itself right now makes 40% of the total uh, index with 11 companies. They are trying to diversify the entire index into the other sectors, like I mentioned before. So yeah, there could be a potential uh, reduction or deletions of, uh, of a few uh, companies. So the last question is, what am I doing with all this information? Well, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Like seriously, I don't own any companies that are going to be affected by this move other than uh, Pingan, I guess. But uh, Pingan also is a new economy companies with all the tech they are introducing. They have an edge over their competitor, their traditional competitors. So I believe uh, they are going to maintain their uh, its weightage on the index. And uh, yeah, if not, they are going to add to it, I believe. Moreover, this will only uh, bring uh, short-term fluctuation in the prices. Uh, and I'm not a trader who chases the short-term gains. So yeah. I'm just gonna ignore it. I would probably add uh, JD into my, I mean, I already have JD. I might add to my position in JD if uh, there's a decrease in the price. Uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Like always, if you are interested, just subscribe and stay tuned until the next episode. Ciao.